Welcome to Cloud Infrastructure Services YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to learn how to install and run WordPress using Nginx on Ubuntu Pro 20.04 hosted on Amazon Web Services. So simply click the link in the description box to come to this marketplace listing for AWS and from here you want to create a new EC2 virtual machine. So simply click on continue to subscribe. After that, you would be brought to this subscription page so simply click on accept terms and then wait for the subscription validation process to fully complete. Once the subscription validation process is done, then simply click on continue to configuration. And then you would be brought to this page from where you can choose the AMI, the software version and the region or zone where you want to deploy the virtual machine. So once you're satisfied with the settings, simply click on continue to launch. After that, you would be brought to this page from where you have two different launch options for the virtual machine. And the first one is to launch the virtual machine from either this website. And the second one is to launch it from the EC2 management console. So I'm going to change it to launch through EC2 and then click on launch. Now that is going to open up the EC2 management console in a new tab. Now within this tab, you can customize your virtual machine. So give your virtual machine a deployment name. So I'm just going to call this one as WordPress. And then scroll down and make sure that the image is the one that you got from the link in the description box. After that, scroll down and choose the instance type according to your requirements. And then choose a key pair by either creating a new one or by choosing an already existing one. Remember that this is the key pair that we would be using to connect to the SSH service of our virtual machine. After that, scroll down to the network settings and make sure that you allow HTTPS traffic and HTTP traffic so that we can access our WordPress website outside of the SSH terminal. Once that is done, simply click on launch instance to start the installation of virtual machine. And then you will need to wait for the deployment process to complete. Once the deployment process is done, the next step is to connect to our virtual machine using an SSH connection. Now for this, simply click on view all instances. Then you will be brought to this page where you can see all of your virtual machines. Now the virtual machine that you newly created is listed right over here. So simply right click on it and then choose connect and then head over to the SSH client tab. From this page, you're going to simply copy this command, open up a command prompt, paste in the command by simply right clicking inside the command prompt and then you're going to replace this path for the path where you have downloaded your private key. Once that is done, simply hit enter and you would be prompted about the connection that you're going to establish. So simply type in yes and then hit enter once more. And then after a few seconds, you would be connected to the SSH service of your virtual machine. From here onwards, we can start using our virtual machine for WordPress installation. Now the very first step for the WordPress installation is to actually install Nginx. Simply click the link in the description box to come to this blog post by CIS, which contains all of the commands that I'm going to be using to set up my WordPress using Nginx on AWS. So the very first command is to apt-get install Nginx-y. So copy this command come over to the terminal and simply type in sudo space hyphen i and then hit enter. So this basically switches over to the root user so that we do not have to write the command sudo for every command that we are going to run for the WordPress installation. Once that is done, simply paste in the copied command for the nginx installation and then hit enter. Now this command is going to download and install nginx on your newly created virtual machine. Now once that is done. We want to restart or start the service of nginx and then we want to enable nginx as well. So the command is systemctl start nginx and then hit enter. After that type in the command systemctl enable nginx. Once that is done the next step is to actually install php. So head over to the blog post and copy this command. Now this command is not going to install php rather it is going to install php command line interface file package manager mysql json and so much more so copy this command head over to the ssh terminal paste in the command and then hit enter and wait for the installation process to fully complete once the installation process is done we need to start the php fpm for that simply come over to the blog post and copy these two commands and paste them in the ssh terminal and then hit enter once that is done we need a backend storage for our wordpress so we are going to install mariadb Come over to the blog post, copy this command to install MariaDB, paste it inside the SSH terminal and then hit enter and wait for the installation process to fully complete. Once that is done, we need to enable the services of MariaDB. So simply type in the command systemctl start MariaDB. And after that, simply type in the command systemctl enable MariaDB. Once that is done, you can move on to the next step. Now the next step is to actually head inside the MariaDB and create a database for WordPress. 
So simply type in the command mysql to head inside the shell of mysql and then come over to the blog post and copy this command to create a database named as wordpress db. Now if you want to name your database something else then simply replace the name right over here. Once that is done head over to the SSH terminal paste in the command and then hit enter. Now after creating that database we also need to create a specific user for the wordpress to use and password for that username. So come over to the blog post copy this command so the username is wordpress user and the password is this one so make sure to simply change these credentials with whatever you like so paste that command inside the ssh terminal and then hit enter once that is done you want to run the command flush privileges and then at the end you can simply exit from the mysql shell by typing in the command exit once that is done now we need to download the wordpress inside a specific folder so the folder is going to be cd forward slash where forward slash www forward slash html now within this folder we're going to download the wordpress so the command to download the wordpress is written right over here using the wget command so copy it and paste it inside the ssh terminal and then wait for the downloading process to fully complete now once the downloading process is done you can see that it is a compressed file so we need to extract it using the tar application so simply copy this command which is going to extract it paste it inside the SSH terminal and then hit enter and then hit enter. So that is going to take that compressed file and extract it in the same folder as forward slash wire forward slash www forward slash html. After that we need to change in the ownership of the folder that has been extracted. So if I simply type in the command ls you can see this folder right over here which is wordpress. So I need to change in the ownership of this folder. So copy these two commands and paste them in the ssh terminal and then hit enter. Now once that is done we need to head inside that folder so cd space wordpress. Now within this folder if I simply type in the command ls you can see that there is a file named as wordpress configuration sample.php. So when we actually run the service of wordpress it is going to look for a file named as wordpress hyphen config. So we're going to copy this file and name it as wordpress-config. So copy this command, paste it in the SSH terminal and then hit enter. So now if I ls, you can see that this time around there is this file which is wp-config.php. Now we need to open this file up. So nano space wp-config.php. Now in here we're going to add in the details about the database. So right in this field you're going to type in the name of the database that you created for WordPress. In my case that was WordPress DB. And then you're going to type in the username of the user that you want to give to WordPress. So in my case that would be WordPress user. And then the password for that user. Once that is done simply hit Ctrl plus O to save this file and then Ctrl X to exit from this file. So now the next step is to create a new virtual host inside nginx. Now to do this we are going to create a new configuration file within nginx. So simply copy this command and paste it right over here and then hit enter. Now this command is going to not only create that file but also going to open up that file. Now within this file we are going to type in the information to create a server using nginx. So in this file we are going to add in the lines which are going to help us establish a server. So come over to the blog post copy all of these lines paste them inside the file and then simply head over to the top. Now right over here in front of this field which is server name it says wordpress.example.com. Now this is the case when you're trying to run it on a local host but when you're trying to run it on the AWS then you need to provide in the IP address of your virtual machine. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove this field, head over to the EC2 management console, click on instances, click on our virtual machine. That is going to show me my public IPv4 address, copy it, head over to my file and paste the IP address right in front of server name. Then Ctrl O to save this file and then Ctrl X to exit from this file. So now the next step is to check for any syntax error in the configuration file. So type in the command nginx space hyphen t and as you can see there it says that the test is successful. Now all we need to do is simply type in systemctl restart nginx to restart the service of nginx and then we can run systemctl space status space nginx to see the status of nginx and it says that it is running a high performance web server. Now to access your wordpress that you just launched on nginx simply come over to ec2 management console copy the ipv4 address open up a new tab and then paste in the address and then hit enter. So doing so would open up this page on your screen. 
this is the first time installation guide for WordPress. So simply choose the language that you want to go with. After that, it is going to ask you to provide the details about your site. So I'm going to simply name my site as CIS and then the username. So I'm going to name it as admin123. Remember that this is the username of the administrator account of the website CIS and then you're going to simply type in the password. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to go with a very weak password and then you're going to provide in the email. So it is going to be test at test.com. Make sure to provide a valid email. Once you're done with all of these settings, simply click on install WordPress to actually start the installation of WordPress. Now, once the WordPress has been installed, it is going to show you this prompt. Now you can start using your WordPress on your newly created website, which in my case was CIS by simply clicking on login and then provide the username, which was admin123 and the password, which was admin123 for me, and then click on login. Doing this would bring you to the dashboard of WordPress and this is your website, which is CIS and you can visit it by simply clicking on visit site. Now that is how you can install and run WordPress using Nginx on Ubuntu hosted on Amazon Web Services. Additionally, you can check out the WordPress single sign on plugin that is developed by the WordPress security experts. Now this plugin comes with a lot of different SSO features, which are WordPress single sign on, attribute mapping, protecting your website because this is developed by the security experts and auto redirecting of SSO. And most importantly, it has the WordPress role mapping. It even has the multi environment support for migration, development, staging and production stages. It has single logout and it can be used to automate the user creation. So the link for this WordPress SSO plugin and the blog post for SSO plugin would be in the description box as well. That also brings us to the end of this tutorial. Now, if you have any queries regarding this tutorial, make sure to leave that query in the comment section down below and we will get to you as soon as possible. And make sure to check out the link in the description box for the step by step blog post on how to set up WordPress on Nginx on Ubuntu hosted on AWS. And finally, if this video has helped you in any way, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.